Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. There are not enough adjectives, there are not enough phrases to describe what goes on inside the heart of God's people when we long for Him. He's everything to us, isn't He? Thank you so much for that beautiful song. And, uh, so appropriate. Day stars shine down on you. There's nothing like the light that God brings into our lives. I want to get into the word of the Lord. If you would please turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. I'll read through verse 3. Then I'll skip to verse 7. And then we'll go to chapter 13. I'll try to walk with you through this. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, and the Lord said unto Abram, To be out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And then into verse 7. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord and appeared unto him. And then into verse 14 of chapter 13. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Verse 16, I will make thy seed the dust of the earth, so that if any man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. And in verse 18 of the 15th chapter, Genesis 15, 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And I'll ask you to turn one more time to the 17th chapter. And we're going to read verses 4 through 8. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Praise. The word of the Lord is powerful. I want you to pray with me right now. This is our first chapel service of the year. And I believe the Holy Ghost has something that would be said in this chapel service that would affect us through the entire year. And I have approached this chapel service. I, I would that others were preaching beside me. But I have approached it with a, a reverence, and uh, I want God to help me to speak what he would have for us to say, to hear, for this year. Would you help me to pray right now, Savior? Thank you for the word. Its power is awesome. There's nothing to compare with it. All the philosophies of man bow down at its presence. In Jesus' name, I pray for the ministering of your spirit to be effectual in every life 
in this sanctuary today. And let your spirit speak to us words that would echo through our mind and walk up and down in the corridors of our soul through this entire year for the rest of our lives, God. And I know that your spirit has a vital interest in this service. It's our first chapel service in 1992. I ask your help. I know that you will give it. God, the lips of clay are not sufficient, but your spirit is. Anoint us now, and for all these things, we'll be careful to give honor and praise to you and you alone. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. you may be seated. What I have read to you are scriptures that involve the covenant that God entered into with Abraham. Involved in this covenant was a land, the land of Canaan, the land of Palestine that we hear so much about in the news today. And when I read what God said to Abraham, I don't think my mind has the capacity to understand all of what went on at this time. I want to preach to you today about beyond the horizon. Beyond the horizon. When God spoke to Abraham and called him from earth and began to lead this man's steps, he gave him a promise that was so powerful that when Abraham began to get a hold of it, it affected his life in such a dimension and it affected uh, him in, in such a way that its effect is still felt upon humanity. Generations have been affected by the conversation that went on between God and his friend at this juncture. The covenant that God gave Abraham required him to leave the familiar surroundings of the first 75 years of his life. He traveled as a pilgrim in a strange land, traveled by faith. There were no maps. You've heard the story many a time. He only followed the Spirit of God. With every step that Abraham walked, he extended the horizons of his life. Each day he lifted up his eyes. He looked to see the place where heaven touched the earth. He looked upon a new horizon almost daily. He would see new possessions in that horizon for himself and his descendants. In 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, verses 15 through 18, we still feel the effect of this conversation. He said, be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. Abraham's journey of new horizons resulted in the acquiring of a land through a covenant with God that is a vital part of eschatology. You cannot discuss the events of the end time without including the Abrahamic covenant. You cannot sidestep it. It stares you square in the face. You've got to include this conversation with a man that was willing to seek new horizons. Every day that Abraham set his stake down, he may have looked at his following and said, this is where we stop today. 
and they would prepare for the night. The tent was stretched, the stakes were driven in, the meal was prepared, and Sarah may bring a meal to Abraham, and as she set the plate in front of him, she would notice that his eyes were not on where the tent was. It was even hard to get Abraham to focus on the food set before him. Abraham, honey, can we talk for a while? Abraham would shake his face, his head, and he would refocus his eyes, and he would say, oh, you startled me. What's the matter? Husband, don't you even know that we are present? And he said, oh, Sarah, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to seem like I was ignoring you. It's just that my attention was on something else. What was it on, Abraham? Could we talk about it? Oh, yes, we can, honey. Can you see the horizon? Oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's magnificent. The setting of the sun. And something in Abraham wanted to tell her, Woman, I'm talking of more than the setting of the sun. I'm talking about more than where heaven touches the earth. Oh, it's glorious, awesome. The poets, the artists have been taken in by it. And no one can really describe its glory. But you see, there was something in this man that the artist could not put on a canvas and that the poet could not put on paper because the heart of Abraham was beyond the horizon. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The word horizon is derived from a Greek word that means the limit. Webster defines it as the line where the sky seems to meet the earth or the limit or extent of one's outlook or experiences or interest or knowledge. The power that is resident in seeking to go beyond the horizon is endless. In one man's heart was resident a desire to live beyond the horizon because he understood that everywhere he would place his foot and everywhere his eye could see the descendants that would follow him for a thousand generations for an everlasting covenant friend abraham said god if that's what you mean i'm going to take you at your word and i'm not going to get comfortable here i'm going to pick up the stakes i'm going to pack away the tent and we're going to march on to a new horizon on the rising of the sun hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God! The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia and said the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Friend, the covenant that was entered into millenniums before is picked up by the apostle to the Gentiles uh, and says, hey, folks, uh, the conversation that went on between God and that pilgrim is still affecting us uh, in our time. What can happen when somebody says, God, is there a new horizon for me this day? I'll take it and pray the attention of heaven is on red alert. And God is ready to give you your marching orders into an horizon that you've never seen before. Beyond the limits of a horizon. God, in 1992, let it be in the hearts of every Texas Bible College student. I'm going to experience a new horizon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
The conversation between God and Abraham was so great and so mighty that when you talk about the Jews returning to Canaan, you're smack dab in the middle of their conversation. When you talk about the prophecy of the millennial reign of Christ, you're smack dab in the middle of their conversation. Oh, what God will do with somebody that will say, this isn't where I'm wanting to stay. I want new horizons. Hallelujah. Up to this point, your horizons have been determined on a large part by others. The parents looked over in that crib at your cute little chubby face and reached those loving arms down toward you. Man, you're safe in that crib. And they picked you up and they dangled you by your arms, hold you to where your feet can just barely touch the floor. Now, most of you can't remember that day, but I'll guarantee you it happened. And with your hands extended, you heard words like, Come on, Johnny, come on. Susie, walk. I ain't never done that before. I just imagine that those thoughts went through your head. You know. Probably didn't. But for the sake of right now, let's just say that they did. You started moving those little bitty legs. and uh, You wanted to. You, you, the idea, you'd seen people do it. Now, you'd never done it, but uh, it looked exciting. And be, besides that... Uh, he could get you out of that crib. Those first steps took you beyond the horizon of your past. Then came that exciting day you'd been waiting in eternity for. Man, you'd set out your clothes the night before. You'd packed your lunch. You'd been shopping, bought your clothes, new shoes whether it was from Salvation Army or Pennies or whatever, you, you, knew, you knew that you needed a good night's sleep, but you were so excited that it was hard. Tomorrow could be your first day of school. A new horizon. Teachers would guide you at regular intervals beyond your horizon. A, B, C. B, E, F, G. Thank you. Then you could say them. Oh, but I see. This is so simplistic. Oh, hang on. Two plus two is four, somebody said. And then two times four is eight. And eight squared is 64. And E equals MC squared. And then... After you pass through all those horizons so quickly, there you are. You are walking across a platform, shaking hands with some important people in your life. And a rolled up piece of paper is placed in your left hand. And you smile while your friends applaud your accomplishment. Then it dawned on you. You would now make the next decision. May I invite you to join with the patriarchs of old, men and women that have given themselves to faith walks that impacted generation after generation, men and women that seemed insignificant to most people in their day, but have done more to affect eternity than all the so-called famous that have been in the spotlights of history. Your horizons have been determined by others up to this point, most of you. But now you have heard from God. The Spirit has spoken to you and has led you to this juncture in time and to this place for a 
very special purpose. And the Spirit is still saying, is there anybody that's wanting to pack up a tent and to pull up some stakes and to live in that region that's beyond the horizon? You can invest yourself in the pursuit of horizons that are accessible to you as the result of your own abilities, ambition, intellect, or charisma, or you can walk with God and experience what it is to live beyond the horizons of humanity. There have been great architects. There have been great builders that have constructed the buildings that were designed. There have been great politicians and military strategists that have been responsible for accomplishments that historians have written about. But none of them would have been sufficient when there was a nation leaving a land of bondage and were trapped by an impassable Red Sea. None of them would have been sufficient. Their horizon would have limited the escape. But God said, is there anybody that will look past the horizon? Hallelujah! 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 Give me somebody that's willing to say there's a new horizon. Our God is unlimited. He is almighty, and he is on my side. There are no limitations with him, whether it be by an army or whether it be by one. One and God is a majority. All he wants is somebody that will say, let me live beyond the horizon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At Texas Bible College, you're going to have the opportunity to go beyond the horizons of your humanity. There is no place like a prayer room. There's no place like an anointed classroom session. There is no place like an anointed chapel service to take you past your Red Sea and to drown your enemy in the horizons of your past. Hallelujah! God, help me to focus beyond the horizon. Hallelujah. Lot walked with Abraham for a period of time, but he never really got a grip. He never really got the vision. He never really understood what it meant. When Abraham said, we got a little further to go, Lot said, why? When Abraham said, it's time to move on, and Lot said, I'm tired, Abraham was looking for something beyond the horizon. Lot said, man, I can't pass up a deal like this. I got a nice home, a new wardrobe, man, for my wife and my daughters. Look at all that I've got here. And Lot decided that that horizon oh, would be the end of his journey. It's tempting sometimes to stop your journey toward the horizons beyond. There is a God who is anxious to continue the conversation. Is there another generation 
that will go past the horizon. I'm convinced that I speak by the leading of God. I am convinced that there is a search going on by the Holy Ghost. I've into the hearts of you that are sitting on these pews. You cannot be ignored by heaven. Lot decided that he would limit his existence to Sodom and Gomorrah, settled for a life of ease, and began to live off of the dying, rotting corpse of the twin cities of sin. He chose to align himself with a system that was destined for destruction. And to this day, its mere name is synonymous with perversion and wickedness. Oh, God, it's dangerous to get comfortable with your present horizon. To learn all you're ever going to learn. To do all you're ever going to do. To become all you're ever going to become. Oh, to go as far in God as you're ever going to go. And to put down your stakes and say, this is where I'm living. God said, I ain't stopping here. I'm going on. And while Lot was so, was vexed, Abraham was gaining new promised land for generations to come. You may have passed up positions. You may have turned down great offers. But what I'm saying to you this morning, there is a conversation that is going on with God in your heart. And I want you to enter into it. You've been led to this point by others. But now it's on your shoulders. Come on. Pick up the tent. Pull up the stakes. Don't be afraid to walk beyond the horizon because the one who's walking with you knows no horizon. Hallelujah. Something happens to people like Abraham and you. The trinkets of humanity don't satisfy. They begin looking beyond temporary dwelling places. And it was written, he looked, he looked beyond the horizon. Brother Griffin, one day he just decided he wouldn't even look for the horizon. Bible said he looked for a city with has foundations whose builder and maker is God. You see, while you walk out of these buildings and you look in any direction, north, south, east, or west, there are horizons. Most of us will not be able to look physically and see a long way because there are so many obstructions. Impossible things to deal with. Things that I don't understand. I do not fathom. But there's something about it if somehow you were to be lifted up above these obstacles. Then your view would be benefited by a new elevation. You would be able to see a long way off. If the sky were clear, you would see for miles and miles rather than just a few hundred yards. Oh, no wonder David said, take me to the rock that is higher than I. I've got to see beyond my present circumstances. I've got to see beyond my obstacles. I've got to see something besides this old place right here.
friend, when you start looking like Abraham looked, when you start looking like Moses looked, Moses stood out on a balcony and looked at all the riches of Pharaoh's kingdom at his disposal. Whatever he desired uh, materially was here. Something got a hold of him. And he looked past Pharaoh's treasures. And the scripture said he chose to suffer affliction with those people of God because he saw beyond the temporary. He saw beyond the momentary pleasures. And he saw something beyond the horizon, Brother Keating, that got his attention. I can imagine Pharaoh saying, what's the matter, son? Aren't you interested in this? Doesn't this appease you? Isn't this what you want? And he would shake his head and say, sir, would you listen to me? I'm sorry, but my attention was on something else. God led them through the Red Sea. God fed them with manna from heaven. God gave them water from the rock. But then Moses had the ambition or call or desire, whatever you want to label it, but he and God got to talking one time in Exodus, the 33rd chapter, and God spoke to him, and Moses said, since we're talking, show me your glory. What do you mean? Miracle after miracle, son, and you're saying, show me your glory. Yeah, God, I don't know why. There's just something in me that keeps saying more, 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 more of God, more of his glory, more of his power. Every day, a new horizon. And God spoke to him in the 21st verse of Exodus 33, and the Lord said, Behold, ha, there is a place by me for people like you. It's not very crowded. You don't have to worry about the elbow room because there's not a whole lot of people that's looking for it. But if you're willing to look for it, there's a place for you. I've been waiting for somebody to ask. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. Oh, you talk about a few. When he got lifted up by God's mighty hand, there were no obstructions he could see for miles. Not only miles, but he could see for years. Not only years in the past, but years in the future. Somewhere, Brother Griffin, somewhere God took him. Somewhere his view was not abated. His view was not foggy. Because when you turn to the book of Matthew into the New Testament, there's somebody on Mount Transfiguration and stand uh, when the disciples wake up, uh, there's Moses. Hallelujah! And he's not looking uh, at the higher parts of history. He's looking him uh, in his face uh, and beholding his glory. Come on! 
Somebody want to see beyond the horizon. Somebody want to go past the limitations. The Holy Ghost is inviting us. Hallelujah. The history has all already been written by those that have came to chapel services before you. Their accomplishments are already written in pages of time. Not that to you. Elijah kept his, Elijah kept his eyes on Elijah from the moment he felt the first touch. He don't you know that he's going to be taken up? Don't bother me now. He said, if I could see him, I his departure, I'd have it. Double. The mantle failed, and he picked it up. Wow! The mantle of Elijah. Oh, somebody could have said, I'd love to have the mantle. Elijah was glad to have it, too. But I've got news for you. He was not going to take it to, to put it into an Elijah museum. It would not be reserved for the archives of Israel. He would step uh, to the river and would roll up that mantle, and he would say, uh, "Where is the God of Elijah?" Because I'm going to take up uh, where he left off uh, a double portion. Uh, because I don't have any horizon. Hallelujah! In this faculty, you have men of such wisdom. You have people that will affect your lives. I could not hold a candle to Brother Keeney or Brother Griffin or Brother Inzee or Brother Sherman or Brother Sibley. I learned from these people. I think if you think God's going to be satisfied for you to set Brother Griffin or Brother Keeney or Brother Inzee or Brother Sibley or anybody or your pastor or anybody as the boundary for your horizon, you're wrong. God will not be satisfied with that. You can build your museums if you want. You can talk about past achievements if you like. But my God is not satisfied with the accomplishments of the past. He's still needing someone. Hallelujah. TBC has not sent their last missionary out on the field. TBC has not sent their best evangelist out. TBC has not sent their best pastor, their most qualified teacher. It's still to happen. Did I 
God could be that preaching to them. They're sitting on these pews. How do we get over there, God? I'm going to sing the priest with the ark of the covenant. the discouragement, the hindrances, the traps. We've never been this way before. We're going to need him. Don't worry, Joshua. I'm familiar with the territory. Don't worry, Texas Bible College. God's familiar with the territory. He knows where the traps are, and he knows how to lead you around them. Friend, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He has not quit leading people by the Holy Ghost. Hey, friend, politics has not taken over the church. The manipulative hands of man have not moved God out of the way. He's still leading people in this territory. Hallelujah. You heard me right. I talked about the leading of the Spirit. Texas Bible College uh, believes uh, in the operation uh, of the gifts uh, of the Spirit. Uh, we believe uh, in the working of the Holy Ghost uh, in the lives uh, of His children. Hallelujah. Stand please in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Beyond the horizon. You keep your eyes focused on the horizons. There's always difficulties that'll pull you under. But if somehow you can focus on past the horizon. For the earth, there will always be a horizon. But for heaven, there is no horizon. How do you know, preacher? Because somebody that went there went back and said there is no more sickness. There is unlimited health. <laughs> no more death. There is unlimited life. No more sorrow. Unlimited joy. No horizons in heaven, only on earth. What? God's saying, he's saying, don't focus on the horizon. Focus on just beyond. You can sit down under the old tree and sip your bowl of soup with Esau if you want to. But put me alongside of Jacob. And let me know there's a ladder that reaches into glory. And let me know there's a vessel. And let me know there's an El Bethel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
don't know this morning or this afternoon what the future will hold, it's impossible to tell. But I am convinced that the Spirit of God is so intimately involved in your life, longing for you to not be limited by the horizons of your past failures. You tried before and you were defeated and you failed. I'm saying by God's grace and mercy, he's telling you that there is no limit to his mercy if you'll just seek after it. But I'm not a good speaker, hey friend, that never has limited God. No. <laughs> You'll never do anything with your life. Don't believe it. Friend, you're not looking at the earth's horizon. Your view is a little bit beyond, and you're getting a little bit edgy. And somebody says, what's your mind on? What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm sorry. It's just that my mind was somewhere else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was all a revival I haven't preached yet. It was all a church I haven't pastored yet. It was all a classroom I haven't even seen yet. Uh, it was all a whole Bible study that I don't even have yet. Oh, go ahead, worship. go and need to go. Consider yourself dismissed. Linger as long as you would like here in this place today until you know that God has arranged for you a place by Him. As He told Moses, there is a place by me. Hallelujah. 
Let's go. Let's go.